Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, and I have the opportunity today to take a look at a really cool, very unusual pistol. Now, the pistol here is a French-made Union automatic pistol. This can be a little bit confusing because it's uh, mechanically very much like a, a Colt Browning, the same as a Spanish-made Ruby, also a copy of the same basic mechanism. And on top of that, Esperanza Unceta, one of the Spanish ABAR companies, manufactured a line of guns called the Union that were the same basic design as this one. However, they're two distinct sets of guns. You had Spanish Unions and you had the French Union pistols, made by different people at different times and to definitely different levels of quality. These French Union pistols are actually really well made. They're well finished, they're finely machined. You'll see that um, when we take a closer look at the gun itself here. Uh, and these were actually put into production about 1925. They were produced until you know, a few years short of World War II. Production finally stopped. And among other things, they were actually submitted in 7.65 French long caliber to the 1933 French pistol trials. Now, of course, they didn't win that trial. The, the Model 35A by SACM was selected as the, the winner there. But Union did try. Now, Kind of like the Spanish pistols, the Unions were made in a wide variety of configurations. Um, in addition to those French trials guns, you could get them in 25 or 32 caliber, long slides, short slides, six round magazines, nine round magazines. Some of them uh, had extended barrels like this one. There were a couple different lengths of extended barrel that you could get. Some of them had selective fire switches that could work as machine pistols. And that is most likely the reason that we have this horseshoe magazine. Now this magazine was patented in 1930 in France, so this is several years into the production of these guns. They're extremely rare to find today, um, probably less than 10 in the United States. Uh, the ones that I've found reference to specifically are four in total, that's it. This is a 35 round magazine, so it runs all the way up in here. The last cartridge sits right here, and then this, when it's full, is all compressed spring. It comes with a loading tool because that's the only way you're going to be able to cram this thing full of ammo. And these are all in 32 ACP caliber. Uh, really, there are only one or two other pistols that were ever designed with a horseshoe type magazine like this. It's kind of unusual. Now, my understanding is when Union decided to make an extended magazine, which again was probably intended for their select fire pistols, that's what would really make practical sense. When they started, they actually first tried making 25 and 50 round straight stick mags. The problem was a straight stick mag that's 50 rounds is going to come to like here and be really awkward to actually use. So someone in the company got the idea to wrap the magazine around the bottom here and bring it right back up and have it, not, it's not fixed to the gun, but have it uh, kind of stabilized by the front of the pistol frame. That actually worked decently, believe it or not. So they went ahead and marketed these. They did attempt to sell these in uh, some foreign countries. You know, obviously this time period, early 1930s, foreign sales of, of military hardware were a pretty typical thing. Um, there is apparently some evidence that they were either sold or marketed in China. Makes sense. Uh, in the 1930s in China, a select fire pistol with an extended magazine would have been a very popular thing, most likely. Uh, we don't know how many, if any, were actually sold in China, though. So here we have all of the components disassembled. We have our extended barrel Union pistol. Now, there's nothing to say that you have to use the extended barrel uh, to use this horseshoe magazine. There's nothing uh, unique or specific about this Union to, to fit this magazine. Um, however, it is. Uh, it does seem to be that whenever these magazines are found, they're always found with the extended barrel pistols. So. They may well have been sold that way, um, as well as with the select fire guns. Now, because of the difficulty in loading an extended magazine like this, they were sold with a loading tool. This is very similar to the, uh, like the Luger snail drum loading tool. It's got a spring tab on the back here with a hook. That hook latches onto the magazine catch, just like this. And then, when you pull this lever up, it pushes the follower down for you, gives you a lot of extra leverage to do that. So that's how you would actually go ahead and load one of these. Something else interesting to notice is the front stirrup here. It seems to be a good word to go with a horseshoe magazine. 
This doesn't actually affix to the pistol at all. It just kind of cradles the front of the pistol frame. Uh, the back end, we have this stiffening rib that runs down through most of the magazine, but then it is uh, flattened out here where the magazine is actually inside the, the magazine well of the pistol. And of course we have numbered uh, viewing windows every five rounds. So 15, 20, 25, 30, and 35. And interestingly enough, we have a, the, the name in here is in French. Again, this, these were French-made Union pistols, not Spanish ones. That says Charger Union, so magazine for the Union, caliber 765, and then BTE SDDG is a, uh, a reference to French patent law saying that uh, this is patented, but the, the government, despite patenting it, makes no warranty that this will actually work like it's supposed to. So that's kind of this interesting standard patent law fine print that you'll find quite a lot. So to load this thing, you would snap this guy on. I'm not gonna do that because it's actually really tight and I don't wanna mess up the nice finish on this. Snap this on. Load it up to capacity, 35 rounds, and then you take it and simply run it into the gun here. We've got our magazine catch on the back. It's a tight fit, but it's also a well-made fit. The front of this magazine has no wobble in it whatsoever. These little wings on the side hook around the bottom of the frame. And you know what? I bet you this actually works remarkably well. It's not as awkward as you might think. The pistol's a little bit long, but the balance when this is loaded is gonna basically not change that much. It's gonna stay centered right about in the middle of the gun. So, honestly, for a select fire 32 auto, I bet this would be a pretty slick adaptation. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm happy to have had the opportunity to uh, bring you a closer view of this exceedingly rare and really kind of cool looking magazine. So. Don't forget to uh, tune back in every week to ForgottenWeapons.com for more extended magazines and weird firearms curiosa. Thanks for watching.